In this week's English lesson, I am going to explain 10 techniques that will finally help you speak English more fluently. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. Technique number one. Yes, listening. Now you might be saying to yourself, Tiffany, listening, how is this a fluency technique? Well, let me explain something first and foremost, what is listening? You see, listening involves actively engaging with spoken English to understand and interpret meaning. Let me break it down even more for you. In order to speak English fluently, you must know how to listen. Point number one, when you listen, you improve your comprehension and comprehension is necessary in order for you to be able to speak fluently. Let me explain more. Listening practice actually helps improve understanding of spoken language, accents, and colloquial expressions. Think about a child. Children, when they come out of the womb, a baby cannot speak. A baby is listening over and over to its mother, to its father, to its siblings, to people around the baby. It's improving its listening skills. It's improving its comprehension skills. And then all of a sudden, one day that baby starts to speak. This is why listening is so important. If you desire to speak English fluently, you must practice listening. The other thing that is important about listening is it will expand your vocabulary. You see, regular listening exposes learners like you, English learners to new words and phrases. Here's the key in context, enhancing their vocabulary. Let me explain it like this. You've probably learned a ton of vocabulary words, but you've also probably been in the situation where you used a vocabulary word and maybe your English teacher, or maybe you have a friend that's American or speaks English fluently. And that friend or teacher said, Oh, we don't use that word anymore. Maybe you felt frustrated. I, I memorized the word I learned from the book. But you see, when you listen to native English speakers, having conversations, when you listen to the actors that are in a movie or a television drama, you can know for sure that the words and expressions they're using are being used currently in real life. So what's going to happen? Naturally, your vocabulary will expand vocabulary that you can use in real life when you speak English fluently. You got it right. The other important point about this technique is pronunciation and intonation development. The more you listen, the more your pronunciation will improve. You see, listening to native speakers helps English learners imitate correct pronunciation and intonation patterns leading to clearer communication. This is absolutely true. You know that I can speak Korean or if not, yes, I do speak Korean. If you didn't know that I do speak Korean. And I remember when I was first learning Korean, I would listen to the news. I would listen to podcasts. I would watch Korean dramas. I didn't even know what they were talking about. I was a beginner. But what happened was over time, the fact that I was listening to so many Koreans speaking Korean. When I started to speak Korean, my pronunciation was amazing. Even to this day, when I call someone on the phone, if I'm calling maybe a Korean restaurant and I start speaking in Korean, when I get to the restaurant, they are in shock. They say, we thought you were Korean. Why? Because my listening skills were so good. I was able to imitate Koreans when I was studying. So the first technique for you to speak English fluently that you must understand and follow is listening. The more you listen, the more you will improve. You got it. I love it. All right, let's keep going. The second technique that is so important for you to understand in order to speak fluently is speaking practice. 
Speaking practice, yes. Speaking practice involves though, actively participating in conversations and expressing thoughts and ideas in English. This is very important. Many times you're learning new things, new words, new expressions. You're putting a lot in, but you don't get a lot of opportunities to take what's inside and pull it out to use in real conversations. But the only way for you to be fluent is for you to practice what you are learning, practice using the words, practice using the patterns. That's how you improve your English fluency. Let me explain this a little bit more to help you understand why this technique is so important. First, it increases your confidence. You see, regular speaking practice boosts learners confidence in expressing themselves in English. That's right. Anyone learning anything, but you as an English learner, the more you practice, the more your confidence will improve. It's so interesting. I was speaking to some of the students in my academy. If you would like to be my student, Hey, all you gotta do is hit the link right in the description, go to dailyenglishlessons.com. And I was speaking to some of my students and I was telling them, Hey guys, in the beginning, you're going to feel nervous. You're going to feel shy when you're speaking in English. But I said, here's what I want you to do. Find a partner and practice with your partner. Now in my academy, our family, there are literally thousands of students. So you can find a partner easily. But even if you're not a part of our family or you don't want to be a part of our family of our family that came out fast, <laughs> you can still find a partner online, but speak to that partner and possibly do a video call with them. It's going to be a little bit nerve wracking in the beginning. You're going to feel shy, but it's going to help you gain confidence in your own abilities. And that confidence will result in you being able to speak more fluently over time. Another point to remember with this technique, enhanced oral communication skills, speaking practice improves fluency, coherence, and effectiveness in spoken English. Let me explain this. The more you practice, the better you'll become. That's just a general rule. As you practice speaking, something is going to happen within your brain. You're going to be watching people's responses to your words and their responses are going to let you know if they understand or if they don't understand which will affect your communication skills. Okay. When I said this, they understood that. So next time I'll organize my ideas in this way as well. Oh, they didn't understand when I said this. So let me tweak it next time. The more you practice, the more you speak, the better your communication skills will get again, affecting your English fluency. And finally for this technique, cultural awareness and adaptability. Engaging in conversations exposes learners to different cultural perspectives and communication styles. I love this. Let me explain how amazing this is. So again, in our family, we have students and English learners from all around the world, Ghana, Japan, Haiti. Um, we have Brazilians. So many different countries are represented in our family. And I have heard from so many of our family members, teacher. I love having conversations with our family members because not only do we improve our English, we start to understand each other more. So, what happens is when they go and speak to a native English speaker, after having spoken to each other, suddenly there's this understanding of, Hey, we're human beings and we might have differences, but we also have lots of similarities that actually affects you. It affects them when they go to speak to a native English speaker. Now they're not as nervous. Why? Because they realize we're just human beings. We have different cultures and different ideas, but I can have a conversation with this person. Why? Because I've already spoken to someone from Brazil, from Mexico, from all of these different countries. And I realize that human beings, we're all the same. It literally helps with cultural awareness and confidence. 
Speaking about this technique of practicing what you are learning, speaking practice will truly help you speak English more fluently. Don't be nervous. Don't be shy. Get through those emotions and try technique. Number two, speaking practice. And this will lead you to technique number three, vocabulary acquisition. Something that I know you have thought about. Getting more vocabulary words, knowing more vocabulary words, vocabulary acquisition, a new word for you focuses on learning and expanding one's repertoire. That's actually, I think a French word of words and expressions. In other words, the third technique is to learn more and more and more vocabulary words. No matter how long you've been studying English, no matter where you live, even Americans, we are still learning new words each and every moment. Why we're watching television. We're having conversations. We're learning things from the younger generation or from the older generation or from books. We are all constantly learning. So you as an English learner must understand the importance of this technique acquiring more vocabulary words. Let me explain this a little bit more. The first important point is word exposure. You see regular reading, listening and engaging with English materials exposes learners to new vocabulary. When you read a lot, watch a lot, listen to different conversations, your vocabulary will naturally improve, but you must expose yourself to new things in English. This is how your English fluency will improve. When I was studying Korean, I was trying to listen to as much as possible. I was trying to be around as many individuals as possible so that I could learn new vocabulary words that were used in real life. And that's what helped me improve my fluency. The next thing that is important is contextual understanding. Basically understanding how to use things in context, learning words in context actually helps learners will help you grasp the meaning of the words and how to use them more effectively. Remember earlier, I mentioned that there is this habit of learning words from books, memorizing vocabulary words from books like dictionaries or vocabulary books. Listen, I did the same thing when I was studying Korean, but there comes a point in time where you have to actually learn words from real life. If you want to go to the upper intermediate and advanced level and speak English fluently, you have to start paying attention to how the words are used in context, in real conversations, as you're watching movies, as you're watching television dramas, wait a minute, they used this word, rewind it. Ah, this is the context in which they used that word. This is how you learn more words in context so that you'll be able to use them later on and speak English with fluency. And also it takes active practice. This is something I have taught so many times on this channel and to you as an English learner, if it's your first time hearing it, trust me, I've taught many different lessons and you'll find them on my YouTube channel. Using new words in speaking and writing activities reinforces vocabulary acquisition. I remember one time specifically when I was learning Korean, I had to memorize a lot of vocabulary words for a test. I got up early in the morning around 4 AM because I had to memorize about 100 words and I was reading them, memorizing the definition, going back and forth. And I was remembering the words, but I got a little frustrated because I knew that after the test, I was going to forget the words. Why? Because if you don't use the words in real life, you will forget them. So again, as you're trying to acquire new vocabulary words, you must remember the importance of active practice. You must put the words into practice, use them to describe your life, use them to describe someone, you know, as you use the words, it will be easier for you as time goes on to use them in real conversations. So again, technique number three, 
vocabulary acquisition. You have to learn a lot of vocabulary words, but it's important to use them. Now, before we get to technique number four, I want to remind you each week when I teach you something on this channel, each week when I teach you a new English lesson about fluency, vocabulary, and many other things, I want you to go to the app, my app English with Tiffany, because I have practice lessons that go along with the lessons that you see on my YouTube channel. Why? Because I want you to put into practice what you are learning. Now for this lesson, you'll go to the app and you'll find some quizzes. I want to see if you really understand these techniques that I'm teaching you. So it's so important. Download the app for free. The link is right in the description and you can go to the app and there are some paid lessons within the app, but it's important for you to practice what you are learning. So download my app English with Tiffany, and you'll be able to practice what you are learning. All right, now let's move on to technique number four. Technique number four is contextual learning. This is actually expanding on what we spoke about in technique number three. One of the important points under technique number three included contextual learning. Contextual learning involves learning language within real life situations and meaningful context. This is one of my favorite techniques because it literally allows your brain to create multiple triggers, multiple touch points that will help you use whatever you're learning later on easier. Think about this when you only have a book and you memorize, that's one touch point. Oh, I learned it from this book. I memorized it. But when you learn things in context, I watched a movie. I listened to a podcast where individuals were talking. I remember hearing their, their, uh, their laughter. I remember on, uh, hearing them talk about their family, their friends. And then all of a sudden they used this word. There's context connected to what you're learning. So let me break this down even more. Why this technique is so important. First, practical education and practical application. Contextual learning emphasizes using language in authentic situations, enhancing practical language skills. Something that I always encourage my students to do is to put into practice what they learn as soon as possible. I encourage them, Hey, you learned a new word. All right. Record a video explaining that word to someone else. Hey, you learn a new word. Okay. Talk about your day using that word, that expression. It's so important to apply what you're learning. Again, practical application will end up leading you to speak English fluently because it will become like second nature. The more you apply what you learn. Secondly, a deeper understanding learning language in context helps you as the English learner understand nuances, idiomatic expressions and cultural aspects. Again, it's so amazing because the same exact thing happened to me when I was learning Korean. There are still some things that I understand in Korean that are hard to explain in English but I understand them. If someone uses an idiomatic expression, a Korean expression, I don't need the translation in English. I understand when to use it, how to use it and what it means in context. Why? Because I learned it while watching a Korean drama, or I learned it while listening to a friend speak to another friend in Korean. And I said, ah, this is the context when this can be used. When you learn things in context, you will actually have a deeper understanding. It will go far beyond just the direct translation, just the direct meaning. You'll understand what's behind it culturally. You'll understand situations in which it can be used properly. And this will help you once again, speak English fluently. So make an effort to learn things in context, not just with books, but learning by watching and listening to real native English speakers. Another reason why this is so important is because it improves your retention. 
When you learn things in context, again, it places triggers and touch points in your brain, making it easier for you later to pull that information out to access that word, access that idiom and use it when you are speaking English. This is called retention, retaining the information, learning a language in meaningful context increases retention and facilitates easier recall. You'll be able to have conversations and all of a sudden, ah, I remember when I watched that TV show and they said, dot, dot, dot. This is a similar situation. I can use the same expression. It helps you remember when you learn in context. So again, technique number four, contextual learning. Let's move on to technique number five. Technique number five is reading. Yes, reading. That's right. Reading involves comprehending written English materials, such as books, articles, and online content. Listen, the fact is the internet has opened up the world to everyone. You can read an article, even if you're living in a small, a small city in India or a small city in Brazil, it doesn't matter where you live. If you have access to the internet, you have access to English and reading will help you improve your English fluency. Let me explain it a little bit more. Vocabulary expansion. Reading exposes you to a wide range of words and phrases and expands your vocabulary. Again, I remember literally how I started to improve my vocabulary as I read more things in Korean. I remember specifically one situation. I was having a conversation with someone in Korean. And without even realizing it, I used a natural Korean expression. I had never said the expression before. None of my friends had ever used the expression in front of me, but I remembered that a book I was reading in Korean used the expression multiple times. So that expression had been lodged in my brain. I understood the context from the previous technique because the book was literally laying out the context, laying out the scene and the word and expression was used there. So when I got to the conversation, my brain literally said, okay, Tiff, use this expression. And I used it and I was shocked. This is the power of reading in order to improve your English fluency. Another point why this is so powerful again, reading grammar and sentence structure. Reading will help you internalize grammatical structures and sentence patterns. I am going to tell you a secret because if you've been with me for a while, you'll know that one thing about me is that I don't teach grammar or do I, I have never taught a grammar specific lesson on my YouTube channel. I have never taught a grammar specific lesson in my academy breaking down any grammar rule. Now I've taught how to improve your grammar, but I've never taught grammar, but in actuality, I do teach grammar. You see in the Academy and even here on this YouTube channel, I understand that the more you as an English learner, listen to me, a native English speaker speak in English using patterns that other native English speakers use. The more the students in my academy read different content that I provide in my academy, listen to different conversations I have with native English speakers in the academy, the more they take in my students and the more you listen to me, you're actually understanding and learning new grammatical patterns. And your brain later on will say, Hey, Tiffany said it like this using this pattern. I didn't say it was a grammar rule, but your brain will naturally follow the patterns as you listen. And as you read the same thing will happen in the book. They use dot, dot, dot. I'll do the same dot, dot, dot. It happens all the time. I have literally watched my students transform, transform. And I just smile because I know what's happening. 
I know what's going on in their brains. They're literally improving their grammar without realizing it. And the same thing will happen for you. Again, your goal is to speak English fluently, read more, trust me, read novels in English, read English books. Maybe you're interested in business, read business books in English. Your grammar will improve your English fluency will improve. Trust me, it works. And also your comprehension will improve. Regular reading practice improves overall reading skills, including comprehension and speed. So listen, if your comprehension is improving, that's naturally going to affect your English conversation skills. You'll understand faster what a person is saying to you, which will also affect your ability to respond faster because you've already processed the information. You've organized your thoughts and you know how to respond. Reading is a great technique to improve your English fluency. Make sense? All right. Now let's move on to technique. Number six technique. Number six is writing. Yes. Writing involves expressing ideas and thoughts through written English, focusing on grammar, vocabulary, and structure. Now, remember, I just explained that reading will help your grammar naturally improve. So if you're following technique number five of reading, and then you move to technique number six of writing, your writing will definitely improve as you're writing. You're literally training your brain to organize your thoughts and ideas. Say you're writing about your day. What happened today? Who did I do it with? Where did we go? When did we go there? Why did we go there? And as you're writing again, you're getting this mental practice so that when it comes time to speak English, you've already organized your thoughts. If someone comes and says, Hey, Tiffany, what did you do today? I already wrote it down. Oh, my friend and I, we decided to go out to eat around oh, 1 PM. We had a really good meal because we were hungry and we didn't feel like eating. We didn't feel like eating in. We didn't feel like cooking. I wrote that down already. So it was easier to say it out loud because I had already written it down. Writing is a technique that will help you. Let me break it down even more. Language accuracy. Writing practice helps learners helps you refine your grammar, spelling, and punctuation skills. As you're reading from technique number five, you're also learning how to spell words properly. Come to technique number six. As you're writing, you're going to be focusing on, Hey, is that word spelled correctly? You'll check it. Then you'll correct it. There's so many things that happen as you follow this technique, but the end result is going to be that your speaking skills are going to improve. The more you write, the more your speaking skills are going to improve. Trust me. There's something interesting that happens as you write, you literally are practicing organizing your thoughts. The next thing is clarity and coherence. Writing activities develop skills in organizing thoughts, as I just mentioned, and ideas in a clear and coherent manner. Remember I taught you last week in last week's lesson, I mentioned my teacher, Miss Candelaria, and I said that she taught me how to think. She taught me how to organize my thoughts when I was writing essays. I use those principles. Even when I give a speech, even when I teach you, I use those same principles that I learned in high school, almost 30 years ago to teach you and to help you organize your thoughts and to speak English fluently. The other point is, creative expression. Writing allows you to express your creativity, opinions, and arguments effectively. Speaking English fluently is all about your ability to properly convey, properly communicate, properly express your ideas, your opinions, and your thoughts. So when you practice this technique of writing, you'll be doing the exact same thing and it will affect your ability to speak English fluently. Make sense. Excellent. All right. Technique number seven, another important technique, cultural integration. Now, one of our previous techniques, we spoke about the importance of culture and how culture will also help you speak English fluently. 
But cultural integration involves immersing oneself in the target language culture to understand its customs, traditions, and social norms. Now you might be wondering first, how can I do this if I don't live in America? Second, how can I do this if I don't know any Americans? And third, how can culture really affect my fluency skills? Let me explain this a little bit more because this right here has changed my students so much. You see cultural competence, understanding cultural nuances enhances effective communication and avoids misunderstandings. When you understand how something is done in a certain culture, i.e., for example, American culture, you'll have a better understanding of how to communicate your ideas, your opinions, your thoughts when you speak in English to other native English speakers. For example, man, in my academy, again, the link is in the description if you'd like to join my academy, dailyenglishlessons.com. In my academy, I actually have several cultural lessons, literally lessons about American culture. And one of my favorite ones and also my students favorite ones is the one I do on subway, the sandwich shop. You're probably wondering, Tiff, what does a sandwich have to do with English? Let me explain. I'll give you the short version. When you walk into subway, the main purpose of subway is so that you can have it your way your sandwich, your way. You walk into Subway, you choose your bread, you choose the meat. If you want meat, you choose the cheese, you choose the toppings. They put on it, whatever you want, your idea, your thought, your opinion is important when you go to Subway, which is probably why it's still so popular. And you have the sandwich you wanted when you walked in. It's the same with English. English fluency is all about you expressing your ideas, you having a good understanding of your opinions and your thoughts and being able to communicate them. When you go into subway, a large part of American culture, you must know your own ideas and thoughts. What do you want to eat? What sandwich do you want to create today? You see the connection, right? It helps you understand more about English fluency when you understand American culture and how Americans think. So when we come to you and say, Hey, how was your day? I've had students when I was in Korea say it was fine. And I'd say, Hey, tell me more. And they get quiet. They're like, teacher, I don't know what to say. I was actually interested. I wanted to know their thoughts. This is a part of American culture. Makes sense now, huh? American culture. It's very important for you to understand culture. Another point, social integration. We talked a little bit about this earlier too. the integration portion. Cultural, cultural, <laughs> cultural integration. These are tongue twisters a little bit. Cultural integration facilitates building relationships with native speakers and integrating into English speaking communities. Now you might not know anyone in your neighborhood, maybe not your city or maybe even your country. You've never met a native English speaker. However, you have access to the internet. There are tons of Facebook groups, tons of online forums. Now listen to me closely. I'm not telling you to go to forums specifically for English learners. I'm telling you to look for forums, to look for Facebook groups that are just about topics or interests that you're interested in, but the people speak English in the group. This is very different from English learners gathering together. If you're interested in cooking, find a cooking Facebook group. You don't have to tell anyone you're an English learner. You can just start conversations about cooking in the group. You'll get this confidence as well, but you'll learn about the culture of cooking in America because Americans are speaking with each other or British people are speaking with each other. Again, talking about cultural integration, it's possible. The other thing is expanded worldview, cultural integration. I got it that time broadens learners perspectives and promotes intercultural understanding. It's so amazing to watch my students as they practice speaking English 
And as they experience this technique of cultural integration, the more they learn about my culture, as they watch the videos, the more their mindset starts to change. They start to become more open-minded as you learn more about someone, as you learn more about someone's culture, you naturally start to think differently. You start to understand them. You become empathetic. You become intrigued, curious. This will affect your English fluency because when you're speaking, it's not just about you. When you're speaking and having a good conversation, there's this back and forth like tennis. Well, in order to go back and forth, I must care about the person I'm speaking to. Well, you'll learn to care more about someone as you learn more about their culture. Makes sense, right? So again, technique number seven, cultural integration. Now technique number eight is also important language exchanges. And it almost goes hand in hand with technique number seven language exchanges involve interacting with native speakers or other learners to practice speaking and improve language skills. Now for this one, in the last one about cultural integration, I said it's important to find forums and different online communities that are not specifically for English learners, but have native speakers in them. But for this technique, the purpose is to practice speaking English. So it's totally okay to find different groups that are for English learners. Let me explain this a little bit more conversation practice. You see language exchanges provide opportunities to engage in authentic conversations with native speakers. Now you're going to enter certain groups that might not have native speakers, but there might be an English learner that is a step or two above you. And that individual will also help you improve your English. For example, I'm going to open up my phone right now and show you for those watching this in our group, we have literally over 2000 students and every day, these students from around the world, let's see if you can see it real quick. Let's see. There we go. Students from around the world, these students, let's close this really quickly. These students hold on. There we go are posting videos, having conversations in English from all around the world. These language exchanges are helping them speak English more confidently. This is why language exchange is so important. Another important point is this cultural exchange. Again, you see how these techniques are kind of all tied together, right? Language exchanges foster cross cultural understanding and the sharing of customs and traditions. When I was practicing my Korean with my Korean friends, friends that I'm still friends with right now, we of course learned about each other's cultures. They learned about my culture and I learned more about their culture and we started to understand each other more. This affected my fluency and it will affect yours as well because you'll choose your words carefully. You won't say things that might possibly offend them. Why? Because you understand the culture. Now, what about this point right here? Mutual learning. Participants in language exchanges learn from each other's languages, helping improve fluency and accuracy. English fluency. I think you're realizing is not just about you. It literally becomes this full circle experience. Others being included. You're putting in, but you're also taking things out and you're also learning from other individuals. It's very important to remember this technique language exchanges. And what about this technique technique? Number nine, personalized learning strategies. This has to be my second favorite one. I mentioned earlier that learning in context, right? Contextual learning was my favorite. This is my second favorite personalized learning strategies. Let me explain. Personalized learning strategies involve tailoring language learning approaches and techniques to individual preferences and needs. In other words, we all don't learn the same. 
You might have a different learning style and you have to figure out what your style, what your strategy is. Some people learn by only reading and it affects their speaking. Others learn by just talking a lot. For example, I had one of my friends. He also learned how to speak Korean. He learned faster than I did. He had a gift for languages, but he didn't even take classes like I was taking. He learned by just speaking with friends. He had a few books and he would practice all the time. I am more of a classroom learner. I had to be in class. I had to write notes in my notebook and that was my style. It's important for you to figure out your style. Figure out a strategy that works for you. If you are trying to speak English fluently, you can't just follow everyone else's methods. You have to find the one or the ones that work for you. Let me explain this more. Customized learning paths. Personalized strategies allow learners to focus on areas of interest or areas requiring improvement. For example, if you recognize that you really, really enjoy listening to podcasts and you really get a lot from those podcasts. Use podcasts as your method, as your strategy. Find as many podcasts as you possibly can where native English speakers are speaking about different topics. Or maybe your strategy is you love to sing. Okay. Write some songs in English, listen to more English songs. Again, it's all about finding your strategy. And also this includes your study routine. Maybe you're an early bird study in the morning. I'm an early bird. Maybe you're a night owl. You stay up late. One of my friends is a night owl. You have to figure out what works for you in order to achieve your goal of speaking English fluently. Also, you have to remember flexibility and autonomy. Personalized learning empowers you to choose methods and materials that suit your learning style. It's totally okay for you to not study in the same way that your friend studies. That's okay. You're a different person, but you have to figure out what works for you. Make sense. The other important point is motivation and engagement. You have to remember that you're more likely to stay motivated and engaged when your learning aligns with your personal goals and interests. Let me break this down again. We're talking about personalized learning strategies. I've mentioned before that when I first started learning Korean, I would watch cooking programs. I would watch comedy programs. I would watch many different programs related to my interests. Why? Because I would naturally be engaged. I was learning indirectly because I was already interested in what was going on in the programs. It's important for you to figure out what you're interested in that will keep you motivated. Now, finally, this last technique is very important. Patience and perseverance. Yes. Patience and perseverance. This is a technique, the combination of these two things you see patience and perseverance refer to the qualities of persistence and determination in language learning. Why is this a technique? You might ask Tiffany, how is this a technique? Have you ever got discouraged? Have you ever been frustrated? Have you ever felt like stopping or quitting? I know you have, we've all been there before. In order for you to achieve your goal of English fluency, you have to stay motivated. You have to persevere and you have to be patient. Let me explain this a little bit more. It will help you overcome challenges. Language learning requires time and effort and staying patient and persevering will help you overcome your difficulties. Realize this is a journey. You will achieve your goal, but you must. Be patient. Another important point that you must remember is that continuous improvement. You see patience and perseverance allow you as the learner to make progress steadily and consistently, but you must be patient as you are patient. You will start seeing more results. And finally, long term success 
Language and proficiency is achieved through ongoing dedication and a willingness to persist despite obstacles. Listen to me. I believe that you will achieve your English goal. I believe that you will speak English fluently. You have to believe it and you have to be patient and persevere. This is a technique that each and every English learner must understand and follow. Now I do hope you enjoyed this lesson. I gave you techniques that will help you speak English fluently. I want you to go back and review this lesson. Don't forget again, downloading my app English with Tiffany. I will test you and quiz you on these things in the practice lessons found in the app. But again, remember you can achieve your English goal. You will speak English fluently. Hang in there. Don't give up. You can do it. I believe in you. Now we were not going to have a story time today because our lesson was a bit longer. But don't worry, I told a few stories in the midst of our lesson today. So look for story time next time. But I hope you enjoyed our lesson and I'll talk to you in the next one.